Hi everybody, this is Larry and nice to see you again. I uh, promised everybody that I would do some teaching on the spiritual gifts, referencing uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And so I want to do that. But before I begin, I want to remind you that I'm speaking with pauses as if I had a translator sitting next to me. This video will be put on YouTube and it will go out all over the world. And wherever there are bilingual persons, someone qualified to translate English to whatever language, then they could use this video and share it with their brethren, wherever they are. And we thank God for this video. We thank God for this technology. And we thank God for you, who's hungry for truth in God's word. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, today for all your countless blessings, especially those blessings, Lord, that we are so unaware of at times. Those that you bless us with and we just totally miss it, yet the blessing is ours just the same. So Father, I would pray not only for these people watching, but for all those who may choose to translate this video to help us all come into a better understanding of the gifts that you've given to us and how we use them for the edification of the church and for your glory. In Yeshua's holy name we ask it. Amen and amen. Well, hallelujah. Let's get right into it, shall we? So I'm talking today about 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and we'll begin right at verse 1. The apostle writes, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Concerning spiritual gifts as spiritual gifts, and indeed, the, uh, I'm sorry, concerning spiritual persons as spiritual gifts. Because without the person, you have no vessel for the gift. The gifts are to people to use as a tool for edification, evangelism, whatever the spiritual need is at any given moment in time on any given day of the week. So the apostle says, I wouldn't have you, I would not have you to be ignorant. I wish you fully to know whence all such gifts come. He wants you to know where these gifts come from and for what reason are they given. That each person may serve the church in the capacity in which God has placed him. That there may be no misunderstandings and no false teachings in the body. That is my purpose today, Lord. I just don't want you to be misunderstand or be mistaken or misled by someone's opinion. Let's let the scriptures speak for themselves, shall we? And my purpose here is not to explain each spiritual gift in detail so much as to just give you an understanding of the body of gifts that we have found in God's word. And then those that are, have these gifts, where are they placed in the body of Christ? Verse two says, you know that you were Gentiles. That means you were unregenerate and you were not a Jew. And you were carried away unto these dumb idols, even as you were led. 
There's so much idolatry in this world today and so much attention given idolatry. It's small wonder that people are really floating about like a ship without a rudder, a ship without a sail. You're just bobbing on the ocean of life. And any wind that blows, anything, that obstacle that you encounter changes your direction, causes you to all but capsize, and you wonder why life is so difficult. God never intended it to be that way. And he gave us gifts to help us along the way. Verse three says, wherefore I give you to understand, pay close attention, wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed. Now you might think that's rather harsh, but remember the Jews rejected him so much that they actually hung him on a tree. My, my, can you imagine the load they carry? And many still today reject Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus, the Messiah. I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is Lord, but by the Holy Spirit. Now think about that. No man can say Jesus is Lord. Serious now, I mean, and what does it mean to be Lord? That means that his will is done in your life and not your own. That means you submit yourself to his authority and you keep his commandments. Because you see, if he's not your Lord, then he's not your, your savior. The two you cannot separate. So we understand that when a person says that Jesus is the Lord, Jesus is my Lord. And I profess that with a heart set on living the way he expects me to. Not the way man expects me to, but the way he expects me to. I can only do that successfully under the power of the Holy Spirit. Verse four. Now there are different kinds of gifts, but it's the same spirit. And there are differences in administrations of these gifts, but the same law. In other words, what he's told, telling us is, yes, there are verbal lists in this text and elsewhere in scripture that tell us what these spiritual gifts are. But then there's different kinds of the way that these gifts are administrated. We want everything religious. We got to check this. Okay, this is all the all the gifts listed in the Bible. And this is what they all mean. And you have to do it this way, otherwise you don't have the gift. No, 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 no. The Holy Spirit operation is not digital. It's analog. <laughs> and we can't put him in a box and we can't put his gifts in a box. But what we're talking about here is similar to the characteristics of your character. It's who you are. For example, I, I teach by writing. I've been doing it for 25 years and uh, 14 years on Facebook. And I never set out to be a writer. I just started writing what God was speaking inside of me. I, I preached a lot of messages to vast audiences in my spirit before I ever started writing it, before I ever started preaching it. But I started writing it down. I didn't set out to be a writer. 
but I've been writing almost every day for the last 25 years as the Lord provides. You know, if, if, if he had come to me and said, Larry, I want you to write gospel messages from my word every day for the next 25 years, I would have thought, that's impossible. <laughs> totally out of the question. I wouldn't even know what to say next week, much less today or the next day. And yet he gives to me day by day. And I use my gift to share with you day by day. He asked Peter, he said, Peter, do you love me? Peter said, Lord, you know I love you. He said, feed my sheep. And that's what I do. I feed sheep. Get up every morning, study, write, whatever the Lord puts on my heart. And it's my joy to do so. So that's, that's my major gift. You know, I can sing and I can do other things and I, I preach and, and so forth. But man, my, my heart is in my writing. And the only thing that I can say that I've been really successful at in my whole life, secular or by faith, is this writing that I do. And some it blesses, some it infuriates, you know. Uh, the Lord told me, he said, I, I don't hold you accountable for who responds to your words. I hold you accountable for those that hear them. So I make sure that you hear what you do with what you hear or read is between you and God. Amen. And so uh, moving on, he says, there are different kinds of gifts but the same spirit and the different kinds of way these gifts are administrated. In other words, don't list them, don't define them, don't mark them down, don't look for a checklist. Okay, I got this, 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 so it must be this gift, or I got this and that did, or this happened and not that. No, no, he's wanting you to live your life and walk your through your life as Christ walked. For those of you who are translating, I know I go a little fast, but bear with me. But he wants us to walk as he walked. And whatever we face, whatever we encounter, you can be sure of this. If we are in his will, he will provide everything we need to meet the need that's standing before us. Maybe it's a gift you've never even used before. Doesn't matter. He will meet the need. And he will use you to be his vessel. How, how cool is that? <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? Praise the Lord. Verse six. And there are diversities of operations, but is the same God which worketh all in all. There you have it. Okay. Don't try to define who is this and who is that. You just do what you can to, to edify the brother or the sister that you're, you're conversing with or sharing with. And God will provide whatever it is in whatever way he needs it to come out. So that it's not for you, but if it's for the, but it's for the person that you're administering to. The manifest, verse 7, the, the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man. Well, not just a priest, not just a pastor, not just a prophet. Every man. The manifestation of the Spirit, how the Spirit becomes uh tangible, how we can understand it with this, this carnal body. It manifests itself. It's, it's something we can discern easily, something we can see. We know that it's bigger than us. When I first started writing, I knew that, that what I was writing was bigger than me. I go back and, and read some of the things I've written in past years, and it's like, 
I'm reading what someone else wrote. I can't explain it. Don't need to. I just give up on that. I ask the Lord many times, why? Why me? You might be asking him why you have the gifts that you have. One day he answered me. Why me, Lord? He said, because I choose to. End of story. He does what he chooses to do. So stop wrestling with it. Relax. Be at peace. And be a blessing to whoever God puts in front of you. So every man has been given a gift. Uh, and then verse 12, he begins to sort all of this out. Uh, well, I'm sorry, not verse 12, verse 8. He says, for to one is given the spirit of the word of wisdom. To another, the word of knowledge by the same spirit. To yet another, uh, faith. Another, gifts of healing by the same spirit. To another, workers of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. Yet to another, diverse kinds of tongues. To another, interpretation of tongues. And then he sums all of this up. And he says, all of these worketh that one and the same self same spirit. All of these workers by the one and the self same spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. Every man, that's every man, woman, and child who has been born again as evidenced by living the new creation life of holiness, purity, and obedience. Everyone, everyone has been given, not just one, but several, many gifts and manifestations. Now, I guess here uh, would be a, a good spot to let you know about uh how you evaluate what your spiritual gifts are. Now, I can't say that what I'm going to share with you is 100% accurate, but uh, I've taken a spiritual gifts test many times. I have urged others to many times. And when they get the results, the most wonderful thing is most say, oh, I knew that. See, deep down inside of you, because it's who you are, deep inside of you, that's how God put you together and gifted you. You just haven't had it in the, in, in, in the forefront or in the conscious, immediate awareness so that you could use these things. God wants us to know what gifts he's given us. And he wants us to know how and where to use them. And they're for every person in the body. Every person in the body of Christ has spiritual gifts. Not one, but more than one. How many is severally? I don't know, but I know this. There's one Holy Spirit. And when you do the work of the ministry to make disciples, he will provide you whatever gift you need to do his will at any given moment in time. Now, if you go to spiritualgifts.com, that's all one word. It's not my website. I just, I just used it and I think it's probably at least 85, 90% accurate. 
and it's a, I think it's a 60 question test. And it's not really a test. It just, you have to answer most like me, least like me, somewhat like me, those kind of answers. Okay. And then when you get done, they will evaluate what gifts that you have, list your major gifts, and then they will give you an explanation of what those gifts are and how they're used in the body of Christ. That's pretty cool. Then you won't have to guess anymore. Okay? Then you can be more sensitive to the Holy Spirit. You can be led by the Holy Spirit to do what he'd have you to do at any point in time. It's not about Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night, my friends. It's about every breath we take, no matter where we are, who we're with. We want to be moving in the Holy Spirit. We want to be living the life of Christ before our fellow man. That's the witness. Remember in Acts 1.8, he says, you shall be witnesses when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. You'll be my witnesses. You will receive power to be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, all over the world, even here in Texas. <laughs> Texas is the uttermost parts from Jerusalem, okay? But wherever you are, Africa, Asia, wherever you are, you want to be able to understand that if you will do the work of the ministry, and this has absolutely nothing to do with Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night, okay? But if you will do the work of the ministry, the Holy Spirit will empower your efforts and your labors of love, and you'll be a blessing to whoever you speak to, to whoever you lay hands upon, to whomever you anoint with oil. Why? Because we are a holy nation, a chosen generation, a holy nation, a royal priesthood. Every member of the body of Christ is a priest, my friend. And he's called you to be Christ and before somebody. Oh, you might not be speaking on a platform before 100,000 people. Maybe you're only speaking to just one. But you can speak love into their life. You can speak faith into their heart. You can pray and ask God's blessing for them. And you can walk hand in hand with them. You can be his chosen vessel to speak to that person that's in front of you right now. Now you think about that. Okay. All those worketh by one and the same spirit, dividing to every man severally, not just one, Several, as he will. You take the spiritual gifts test and it lists the most prominent, the next prominent, the next most prominent, and so forth. And uh, you'll be blessed, you know. Let's talk about the gifts just a little bit. And Paul likens the gifts as parts or members of a body. And we all know that we have body parts, right? <laughs> I hope I have most of mine. <laughs> so let's talk about them and uh, let's see where Paul takes us here. So for as the body is one and hath many members, all the members are of that one body. All my body parts are part of my one body and I have only one body. And at my age, I'm very blessed that most of those parts work together. The hand doesn't work for the hand. 
The ear doesn't work for the ear. My stomach doesn't work for the stomach. My feet don't work for, for the feet. Everything contributes to whatever the body needs for me to be me in this body. It's a vessel for me to use to get where I need to be and to share his life in me with others. Now, isn't that what it's all about? And so he says, I'm not going to just set you out there vulnerable and empty. I'm going to give you gifts. Gifts that you can use. And they will be so astounding. So amazing. That few, if any, can argue. This person has God in residence in his person. You are a temple of his Holy Spirit. Amen. So, for by one spirit, we are all immersed or baptized into one body. You're truly a regenerate new creation life. You've given to your, your faith has given you repentance. Acts 2.38, Peter told him, he says, repent and be baptized, immersed in water, every one of you, for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the Holy Spirit. Friend, when you shall receive the Holy Spirit, you get the gifts of the Holy Spirit with the Holy Spirit, empowered by the Holy Spirit. Amen. For by one Spirit, we're all immersed into one body, whether we're Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free. And we've all been made to drink that one spiritual drink. So verse 14 begins and it says, for the body is not one member, but it's many as we talked about. Verse 15 says, if the foot shall say, because I'm not the hand, I'm not the body. It is therefore, is, is it therefore not of the body? Come on. You know, if it's attached to the body, it's part of the body. If you're attached to the part of the body of Christ, you're part of the body. And you have a part in that body that is vital to the well-being of the body. If the ear shall say, because I'm not the eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? Verse 17, if the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole were hearing, where would the smelling? But now hath God set the members, every one of them in his body, as it pleased him. You didn't choose what gifts you have. You didn't choose what part of the body you are. That's God's business. What I'm here today is to help you identify what part of the body Christ has made you to be. Because it's, it's like in an orchestra, if you have been called to be a tuba player and you try to play a clarinet, all you're going to do is make a squeaky, joyful noise, my friend. <laughs> and, and so it is, you know, uh, the, in the body of Christ. So God has set the members, every one of them, in the body as it's pleased him. You know, I'm not who I am because it pleases me. I am who I am because it pleases him. And I asked him why, as I told you, and he said, because I choose to. He gets to choose. 
And so there's no point in arguing with it. <laughs> Just find you a spiritual gifts test and, and take the test. Listen, I was in a home meeting one night and we were talking about spiritual gifts. And there was a young man sitting across from me and I said, sir, I said, can I ask you a question? And he said, sure. And I said, do you know what your spiritual gifts are? And he goes, no, sir. I said, do you believe God has given you gifts? Maybe. Possibly. I said, don't you think you might ought to show a little interest in finding out? Would you like to find out? Yes, sir, I would. Well, I talked to the pastor about that, and, and uh, I told him about this spiritual gifts test, and and so he got up the next uh, time we had a service, and he said, look, he said, uh, next Sunday night, we're going to come here for one purpose. We're going to, those of you that come, we're going to give you a spiritual gifts test and evaluate the test for you so you understand what your gifts are. <laughs> I'll let you interpreters catch up with that. And so we did. 28 people showed up to take the spiritual gifts test. And as they filled them out, when they completed them, I had a, a system of evaluating them. And I evaluated them and listed their gifts. And almost without exception, when I showed them what their gifts were, they said, oh, I knew that. It wasn't a surprise to them at all. They were just making them aware that this is who God has said you are in his body. Of those 28, not one was a pastor, not one was a deacon, not one was a bishop, not one was uh, a monsignor. <laughs> Things that were titles we're used to, okay? But almost all of the gifts listed in this chapter and other places were in all the people, the people that don't normally sit on the platform. Now here's the problem. If you're involved with a community of believers, you call yourself a church, and you have all these gifts dispersed amongst all the members of the church, why is it that when you come in together for your important meetings, forsaking not the assembling, why is it that when this happens, only one person gets to use his gifts to edify the body. Now, I don't know about you, but that don't make a lot of sense to me. If we come together and we have all of these gifts, all these gifts ought to be working together in some way to edify the whole body. If there's food, there's a lot of things that need to cooperate in a meeting for me to for the food to be a benefit to me. My whole body's got to get up and walk on my legs and feet and go over where the food is. And then I gotta put some food on my plate with my hands and my arms and my shoulders. And then my hand with a tool called a fork or chopsticks or whatever you use or your fingers like we do in India and you got to get that to my mouth you know if I put the food in my ear I'm not going to be able to hear and I'm also going to be hungry but if I put the food in my mouth then I can swallow the food with my throat see every part of the body is cooperating for the benefit of feeding the body. And that's what the spiritual gifts were all about. 
within the framework of our community of believers. But they go even beyond that. When you're not assembled, you're out on the street or you're in the market somewhere or you're riding in a tuk-tuk. <laughs> Some of you don't know what that is, but anyway. A tuk-tuk is a little three-wheel taxi you see in videos if you've never been to Southeast Asia or Africa or places like that. Tuk Tuk is a, a little small taxi, three wheel. It's guided like a motorcycle, three wheel, and there's a seating area in the back for passengers. And uh, they're everywhere in Southeast Asia, many places in Africa, and uh, other places too. They're, they're becoming a worldwide.